How many of you have bought a new gaming mouse and opened it up only to have mushy clicks, pre-travel, or even worse, the dreaded death rattle? What if I told you for just $6 you could fix the problem yourself and improve any gaming mouse? Sound too good to be true? Let's find out. Gaming mice are complicated bits of tech. There's lots of moving parts and they're built to fractions of millimeters of tolerance to make sure your clicks are crispy and your aim's on point. Most companies still use human quality control or QC departments to check every mouse by hand as it comes off the production line to ensure that the customer gets a perfect copy. But these QC workers are often given unrealistic deadlines and targets and if I had to check a thousand mice or I wouldn't collect my paycheck at the end of the day, I'm probably not gonna have as much attention to detail as I otherwise would. It's no surprise then that some of the mice that ship out to customers don't arrive in a condition that reaches that high quality benchmark. So if you're unfortunate enough to get a mouse that isn't quite up to standard, what can you do? Obvious answer, return it to the store you bought it from. Now that's cool, but what if the mouse is out of stock or it's something you imported or you got it in a shady deal behind the trash cans in a Waffle House parking lot? Obviously, if your sensor's doing loops or it arrives in several pieces after being kicked down the road by the UPS guy, you're out of luck. But if it is just a minor issue, you might want to consider trying our lord and saviour, the 30 micron aluminium tape. I've been using 30 micron tape since I started taking mice a little bit more seriously and it has saved me countless returns and improved my experience with more mice than I care to remember. Ultimately, any tape will work for the technique that I'm going to show you, but I use aluminium tape because number one, it's flexible and can fit almost any shape. Number two, it's lightweight and won't add bulk to any mouse that you choose to use it on. Three, you can easily find it in thicknesses as low as 30 microns. Finally, it's cheap and available pretty much anywhere. So how does this shiny little miracle work then? First, you need to diagnose your issue. The most common complaint that aluminium tape can fix is pre-travel. Pre-travel relates to how far you have to push a mouse button down before it actuates and the click is registered. A button with a lot of pre-travel or too much tolerance can feel loose or almost shaky and rattly to touch. To apply this fix, you will need to open up the mouse. That might mean a new set of skates if you're not careful taking the stock ones off. I recommend applying a bit of heat with a hairdryer for a few seconds to try to loosen up the adhesive before you peel for the best chance of getting them off without bending, breaking or scratching. I use a plastic razor blade or thin spreader to remove the feet from the base of the shell without scratching the paintwork or the skates. If you've managed to remove the skates without damaging them, well done. Now put them aside and unscrew the mouse to see what you're working with. Note here, some mice have additional plastic clips holding them together, so if the mouse doesn't immediately come apart after you've removed all the screws from the base, don't tear at it like a gorilla. Look online for a teardown clip to make sure that you're not gonna do any damage. Once you've got the mouse open, it's time to prep your tape. The aluminium tape we're going to use is typically sold in 25 meter rolls. We're only gonna need three to five centimeters for the fix that we're gonna apply to each mouse, so prepare to pass on your $6 roll to your grandkids because you are never running out of this stuff. Cut yourself a five millimeter strip and divide it into small squares, usually around five millimeters by five millimeters, but this might vary depending on the size of the mouse you're working on. Now you want to locate whichever button has the pre-travel. For the size, this is usually pretty easy as they're generally accessible. For mouse one and two, sometimes this can require further disassembly. Again, if your mouse one and mouse two actuators aren't immediately visible, I would refer you to a teardown guide to help you dismantle further. You're going to need to find the click actuators. Now, for the side buttons, this typically looks like a plastic cross elevated. And for the main mouse one and two clicks, this is usually a square, sometimes with a smooth, polished piece of plastic in the middle. Now, using tweezers or your fingers if you have tiny elven hands, peel the tape from its adhesive backing and apply it directly to the actuator for the switch that has the pre-travel. If the pre-travel was only minor, one layer might do it, but sometimes I find I need three or even four layers to get that tuned and locked in feeling on the click. The great thing about the tape only being 30 microns thick is you have the flexibility to add or remove layers to tune it just right for what you want from that click. This technique works on any button that activates a switch. So it isn't just main and side buttons. It can work on DPI or function buttons on the mouse too if they have rattle or pre-travel. I've even found that clicks that don't require it benefit from having a layer or two. It gives that click that extra sharpness and immediacy as you actuate it with slightly less pressure and travel needed. Ultimately, I'd say just experiment with it and see what works and feels best for you. Okay, so now we've fixed our loose clicks. What about that rattle? Now your ability to fix is gonna depend on where that rattle comes from, but most of the time tape can still help. 
One of the most common culprits for rattling mice is the sensor refractor. Most modern optical sensors use a plastic lens to reflect and diffuse the laser onto the mouse pad surface to track and accurately measure movement. Unfortunately, this refractor isn't always secured to the sensor firmly enough and can rattle fractionally up and down between the PCB and the base shell of the mouse. A good way to check if your refractor is loose or at least at risk of becoming loose is to see if the plastic standoffs have been welded to the sensor or not. If they look unwelded and you don't fancy taking a hot iron to your new gaming mouse, and I don't blame you, a couple of squares of tape here can help. Simply take the small squares that you cut for the pre-travel on the side and apply them directly over the standoffs onto the back of the sensor. Please take care not to make your squares too large and bridge any components on the PCB itself. The squares should be small and not extend outside the footprint of the back shell of the sensor. If you'd rather not risk using tape at all here, a small drop of super glue or other adhesive to connect the sensor to the standoff will work here as well. Before you close your mouse, you might also consider adding a drop of silicon grease or lubricant to the plastic standoffs of your scroll wheel for that buttery smooth glide. I've put a link in the description where I got my silicon grease. Again, it's a few dollars. So there you have it. Crispy clicks, smooth scroll, and no more rattling mouse without having to wait around to see if your return was approved. I cannot tell you the amount of times the difference between a cheap OEM mouse and a premium click fill was a $6 piece of tape. I'd love to hear from any of you who tried out this tip for yourselves. How did you get on? Did it fix your pre-travel? Are you aluminium tape pilled? Sound off in the comments below. And remember, if it's not good enough, I'll keep you informed. So get subscribed and I'll catch you in the next.